All right, hey folks, it's Brian, long time no see. Just got back yesterday from Indianapolis, Gen Con. So that's what this video is all about, my Gen Con experience. So this year, instead of uh, running twice a day, <laughs> uh, I just ran four sessions for the Lurking Fears uh, to get my badge. Because my buddy Ed and uh, another high school friend of ours, Terry Bingham, and Ed's son and two of his friends all came out. It was like their first game convention. So Ed and I were trying to, you know, let's play. We get a chance to play together here. And it didn't really work out that way. We got one game together. <laughs> it was just a mess. This is the first time I actually had to try to do uh, Gen Con from the player's side. And it's like three minutes after noon when it kicks off and everything I wanted was booked out. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, and so we did some messing around. He had, he got into two of my games and his son got into one of mine. Uh, we did play uh, Zweihander. It was supposed to be Knives in the Dark, but it turned out something about Mary. <laughs> A little intro thing. Uh, so, my games. All right, uh, Thursday morning I did Dark, darkness. I did uh, The Broken Tower. And we had, I think everybody was pretty much new to RuneQuest. There may have been one player that had played RuneQuest 30 years ago kind of thing, right? Really well. They were talkers. Oh, man. Talk, 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 talk. Which is okay, you know, for the role playing and the, the whole, there's two groups of them. That's right. There was three that were together and two that were together. Uh, and then my buddy had, um... So for like the role playing that kind of stuff, it worked out okay, but they would just jabber, 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 trying to push the scenario along. Okay, what are you gonna do next? <laughs> what are you gonna do next? What are you gonna do next? And I cut the uh, the combat with the rock lizards uh, way down. So as soon as the rock lizards took damage, he was gone. <laughs> as soon as the rock lizards took damage, he was gone. Uh, there was some frustration in the firing into melee rules. <laughs> Ah, but we made it work. And let's see what else. Uh, got up the. Uh, we're passing the tower because they heard the cattle, so we passed around the tower in in the actual broken tower town. Um, passing by the tower to get to the cattle, they saw the cattle, and somebody got special success walking by, so they heard the the chanting inside. But of course. A dreamer knows everything that's going on. Um, and so I allow uh, D D D D the bad guy. Not Dash. It's uh, anyway, the bad guy, right? To to know that you know there's people here, uh, so we can prepare and do an ambush kind of thing. Well, they come in, they check out stuff. I do my little spiel on the tower and everything else, and the blood and the smell and. They you know, tiptoe in and tiptoe in and tiptoe in, and so the Skrupa comes up looking around, and they all thought that was the goddess because the goddess also talking at the same time. You'll feed me more, and I've got this cool, well, cool. I think it's cool. I've got this spiel where she speaks in you know, earth tongue, and then ancient the Allen, and finally shortening kind of thing, and I did a translation of her little spiel into. Uh, Nordic, maybe Danish, and a spiel into Greek. And so I'm trying to pronounce as best I can these words. <laughs> of course, nobody can understand what's going on, but like, hey, do you know her speech? Well, you know, this is making rolls like that. So it was fun. Um, so they're hearing the words and they're seeing the Skrupa. So they think the Skrupa is the, the demon goddess. And uh, then they decide, okay, no, we're not going to feed you any cattle. And they start backing out. And Danikos, that's the bad guy, he does his little ambush thing. He comes running out. Um, Vostor's right there in front. He summons his fire elemental. And I do fire elementals, I do all elementals a little differently than rules is written. Um, 
so he summons a fire elemental there. It does its damage to Danikos. Hurts him badly. Uh, and then two people move up and all three of them attack. And before he can even get a strike out, he's down and dead. <laughs> so they put the fire elemental out and they take the body and drag it out. And um, they're getting ready to do the cattle thing, but Adrima did do the enthrall on Vasana. So Vasana goes, to, hey, no, we can't take the cattle. <laughs> they stay here. They belong to her kind of thing, right? And at that point, we actually had to call a, a cut time because I had to run off to another game or another uh, to something. It was probably a seminar. And because we'd gone that far for time and we had like 15 minutes to, to close up again. So we just narrated the back end piece. And off they went. They had a good time. Okay, next day, 7 to 11, Darkness at Runegate. Now, this one had a fellow who had played RuneQuest. Uh, he was from the UK. Um, and at first, I had difficulty understanding, like, his speech impediment. It wasn't, was not an accent. Um, but once he actually got into playing, his accent came on, we could understand him fine, so, um, and there were two new folks, two new new folks, and some others who had played like Cthulhu or something, so they knew a little bit about the whole mechanics, I know, percentile roll low, and um, this is the one where Edna is somewhere in, <coughs> in my game, and, um, they get there, they go through the whole deal about the, the body being destroyed and the priestess killed and they're doing some searching around. They find stuff and uh, the guy who's played a lot was making a, a few side comments because he knew, he knew some of the stuff that was going on based upon the various runes that were scratched into the temple. But, you know, his character, Vasana, she doesn't know. Yeah, so it was a, a little bit, uh, not touch and go, but a little... Uh, tender walking around that kind of stuff um, but they meet up in town they, they go search around they search for the wells to see if maybe there's some disease coming from the, the wells kind of thing nothing there and they run into the uh, followers of the kindly one and um, they mention that they're going to go well they make connection with them there so they know about the kindly one and stuff which which I listened to the scenario with my uh, PDF reader, and I listened at double speed because I had to get through stuff. And the kindly one comes off as Kandion. So that's, that's my new name for her, Kandion. <laughs> so nobody can really understand. Because the kindly one always sounds kind of suspicious, right? Um, but the party decided they were going to go search the woods. Um, and they made some decent rolls, got in the woods. Uh, made a really good roll so their trail they were on hooked up with the trail uh, and they get to the um, chaos spot two of them get sick and they look around they see the the altar made out of bodies um, there are no brew here at this time but uh, somebody's thinking they had Solara set up the spot for doing a clairvoyance and so they go back to town they go to the inn uh, they get some drink and eat, they talk with the guy a bit. Um, and then the Father's Kindly ones show up and they start drinking. They drink and they drink. They have something to eat for dinner and they drink and they drink and they drink until it's time to go. <laughs> um, so they sneak out. And in, the way I do this is I have the, um, I have the healer in a cabin out in the woods. Just because I think going through the gates at night, I can see, you know, the guards, we're going to go, oh, we're going to Horse Town or whatever, you know, some kind of excuse to get out of town, letting people through. But, you know, there's only a thousand people here, and she's new. People would, I think, kind of catch on at some point about this woman going out all the time <clears throat> with this group of people, you know. So that's why I stuck out there. Um, so they go to her cabin. 
And uh, she lets the people in doing her little greeting thing. And then she sees the parting. Oh, what's going on here? And she goes, well, you have to promise, you know, not to reveal any of the secrets. And you have to donate magic points and something else. And uh, Vasana steps up to the doorway and starts interrogating her. And uh, this goes on for a little bit. She, she's got her story. She knows what she's talking about. Um, but eventually they step on something that kind of triggered me. Okay, yeah, this is a, a get into the bad situation. So one of the uh, acolytes, if you want to call them that, uh, spills her piece about, oh, they make us drink this horrible liquid. There's demons there. And okay, I kind of want to really releases her protection of you and so she doubles over in pain from her diseases and Vasana says I kill her okay so strike ranks right five strike ranks to draw a weapon things can happen during those five strike ranks and if you're moving then you can draw a move at the same time that works out but in my head the first thing I thought of was darkness spirit but I didn't have the um, bestiary and the darkness spirit is not in the scenario not elemental darkness elemental um, so okay, I thought befuddle, quick, quick, uh, quick spell gets off on strike rank one five. So she's drawn her weapon. She does befuddle, and hopefully that'll take care of Asana kind of thing, right? Uh, but I completely forgot about that when we started doing <laughs> statements of intent around the rest of the party. And then I do movement because movement affects strike ranks. Everybody's got their strike ranks figured out now, right? And then we do things. And so she takes off to the back door. She gets out. <clears throat> she gets a ways. We tried to do the chase rule things, but just did not quite really work well. Besides the uh, the Sonic like got a critical success or something. So okay, combat. She turns. She's got her claws, but she was going to try to do a, a strength spell first, so she can do some you know damage kind of thing. And by that point, two others have gotten up on her, and three strikes, and she's dead because she's got you know claws, three deck strike rank. Two side strike rank, that's five plus four for the claws, that's nine. Strike rank nine. Who hits before nine? Everybody hits before nine, right? <clears throat> so they kill her off. Um, they did before they got to the cabin do the, the clairvoyance thing. And at that point, the brewer there setting up the bonfire, so they knew what was going on. Um, we get to the point where we just kind of narrate uh, after she was dead, going and getting going to town getting uh, Severos and the two Humakti and going out there and taking care of the brew. Um, I did mention there are two big brew. One's kind of tough and the other one's, you know, really hard to kill. But we just narrated at the end. Okay, the next night, again, 7 11, because it's dark. It's lurking fears, right? It's supposed to be scary stuff. Darkest room gate. That's a scary scenario. Uh, last thing at night, right? And then I did uh, the Fainting Spirit on Friday, Saturday night. Not really scary, but it does got some scary stuff in it. Uh, again, uh, two brand new people. A uh, guy was uh, really interested in learning the system. Um, in fact, he really appreciated everything, the way, the way I handled everything for them for a new system because they had been through another game with a new system and uh, they were floundering with their GM. They didn't appreciate that at all. Um, so the fainting spirit, and there's starts out there's the vignettes, and I have to stop people. We're not doing tactical stuff. We're not actually drawing bows and shooting arrows. We're talking about how would you, inv you know, what kind of passions or runes would you invoke, to, and what kind of skills would you use to, you know, save the boy and, you know, beat back the lunars kind of thing. It's just verbal stuff. We're narrating stuff. Get your feel for some of the stuff happening. And again, we get back to uh, Queen Lika with the boy again vignette stuff how are you going to convince her to let you go into this other tribe's land <laughs> this other clan and do stuff in her name kind of thing right <clears throat> and uh they all had some good good points to you know you know the best stuff happened there will come our way kind of thing it was kind of cool and they get to uh they run into the the uh the patrol they get with the girl they go to the fort they meet the girls they have the little intro thing um some discussion going on and then they go to famous bell they go to the, the clan hall see the murals and all the descriptive stuff and um they try to take the knife but 
the circle all turns and looks at him, so they put the knife back. The girl says, well, I remember the claim, maybe I should take it. So one of the girls takes it, and that's fine. They don't need that knife anyway. Any knife will work, which we should find out later, because... Um, um, Yanioth. They've got Vastor, Yanioth, um, Vichy, no, not Vichy, Natham, Solara, I think, maybe. It was all on all non Kalimar people except for Yanioth, so Yanioth's the, the leader of the party. And, uh, yeah, I, we, we talk through all the mechanics on what this really means and stuff and they do the worship stuff and she cuts herself and she walks through with the knife. <laughs> so the next person that goes, well, let's try my knife. Does it work? Yeah, it works. We all get through and they, they sacrifice their runes. So Yanyath didn't pass. So it was all weak and shrivelly. Um, and they go through the various things. They have Vostor do the honor duel. And since there was only like four, I had a no-show. So there's just four. That'd be two no-shows. So I had three. I must have three of them. Five, I mean. Five instead of the six. Yeah. Um, so since they were kind of short. I went ahead and uh, just used one Daughter of Darkness. And they actually took care of her fairly quickly. Um... Because she had a chance really to react. Uh, she's doing her thing, and they did the Earth Elemental to trap her, and um, well, they used the small elemental at first, right? The small elemental has only got a ten, strength of ten, and the, the daughter doctor's got like a strength of twenty-one or something stupid like that. And so she just steps right out of it, and. The, the player asked if she could it could use another room point and change it into a three um, a medium size I uh, said so sure yeah let's do that that'd be fun in that in which case that's got some strength can actually do some damage and you know from the neck down so it does a bunch of damage to it and before it can turn to smoke they managed to do a whack on the head um <clears throat> they all get through the tree and the nymph thing and then they get to the final one where we're doing um, the daemon and the loon is there the loon takes the two girls and one of the players out first round um, so the rest of the players and some of the players were actually putting some they were, they were doing like six points of, of six magic points at a shot kind of deal or four or three you know some significant numbers um, and they got the loon, I mean, the, got the daemon back up to strength within like three rounds. Because the, the, the loon went to chase off one of the players and that player backed away. And of course, all people can move faster than elementals. So how can the elements ever catch up to them? Um, so it, you know, followed for two rounds. And at that point, the, uh, the daemon was back up to full strength and took care of everything. And so they all end up outside waking up. Everybody's normal. They get celebrations, they get all their their, their uh, tattoos and room points and all their uh, rewards for the scenario. And then Sunday morning, after a late Saturday night at a Sunday morning game, Pendragon, the damsels of, three damsels of the fountain. Now it was advertised as 6th edition, and I've got 6th edition. But 6th edition combat's got specific combat uh, options that are available that I wasn't all that familiar with, nor with the whole parry piece, thing like that. So I've got to spin myself on that combat. Plus, <clears throat> there are no skill differences. And there's some limitations on runes, and, or not runes, but on the passions and stuff. So I've got a year <laughs> to get the pre-gens adjusted to 6th edition and to learn 6th edition better to get ready for the three damsels. But I've got to tell you, that fairy knight in the first, first, first uh, encounter Every single time, just destroys people. Um, <clears throat> so I've, I've nerfed him, bringing all his skills above 20 down to 20. Um, I've got to drop his armor next time. <laughs> Holy cow. And he, he took, uh, well, all of the players either got knocked unconscious. Uh, we had one knight get killed outright with one shot. 
and um, KO, KO, and somebody down to like just a handful of points before a conscious one or two points before he goes unconscious, right? So they kind of okay, <laughs> you win, keep the girl, they go back to the the, the uh, fountain, and I have the fountain be fat to be magical, so every wound. They wash the wounds, they get that D6 plus three for every wound, plus they do the first aid on every wound. Uh, <clears throat> and then I allowed her to do the resurrection on the night. <laughs> uh, so she comes back, and they spend a week, so they get their, heal their weekly healing rate done, and uh, then they, they, they sneak back. <laughs> and... Um, this time they got the, the fairy knight. The fairy knight, they knocked him unconscious. He turns into a rabbit flies away. Um, so they rescued the girl. Oh! I may be getting this confused because I actually ran three damsels for, for my friends <laughs> back at the, back at the, yeah, at the, uh, what was it, hotel? At the condo, back to the, at the condo. So I'm getting that confused because <laughs> that's how they did it. Uh, oh, they distracted the fairy knight with the jousting, and then one of the guys took the girl and snuck off. That's what happened. They snuck off through the woods, and then the fairy knight realized she's gone. Who took her? Oh, leave now while you can. I'll have to hunt her down again. So uh, <laughs> they all take off, and uh, she goes off back to her dad, and they go on to the the next scenario with the the widow. Still remembering the the last game with my friends instead of the scenario um, at Gen Con. Holy gal, what a mess! They did kill the boar. Okay, they do the jow scene. I remember who won. There's kind of a three-way fight for the the widow because uh, we were short a player for this too. There's the two brothers and one of the other guys. No, it's just one brother because the other brother was missing. So there's this three-way competition going on. And um, they ended up three-way tie between uh, the jousting and the hunt and uh, the courtly graces, the entertainment, the courtly entertainment at the party at the end. And so we did a runoff and one of the guys won that. I don't remember which one now. So somebody won. Uh, they do the whole uh, proposal deal. And they get the uh, more grand passion. And the fair, invisible fairy shows up, does his thing, stabbed Grian, <coughs> did damage to her. So the knights start fighting with. Their daggers, they impassion. Um, and call for their swords. And two of them hit him. And that was enough to kill him. He's only size three, right? So he's got so many hit points. Um, and he does his little singing thing, so they figure out that he's the one who killed Sir Hugo. That answers one of the riddles. Um, they still have to stop the marriage for the other. Um, but then they go on. They go back to the fountain, and then they go on to uh, the nursery burdens. Uh, sneak the girl out. So they get there. They do their thing. We did one of the uh, games, because there's only one player eligible to for uh, Blian to attach to. Uh, but they decide, okay, we're going to... He's going to get the horses ready. We're going to sneak her out. He's going to sing and play with the music talent to distract the part, uh, the rest of the the uh, court while they sneak her out. And they um, successful on the distraction, successful on something else, and successful on the uh, on the stealth. So they get everybody out, get on their horses. They go across the thing. Somebody damaged their horse twice. <laughs> One person damaged their horse once, so they have to stop and and you know get control of the animal and go again and 
But they get across to the end, and um, one of the knights has the passion of more for Cleanne from the first uh, first piece of the scenario, first encounter. Um, and he rolls his passion for her for something. Maybe it was to for his horsemanship going across, and he like critted it. That could be because he took damage. Oh, they get to their side, and and the prince shows up, and he's coming over, and the guy's saying, "No, no way!" And I rolled my passion, and he critted his passion, and so I actually gave that as a bonus to Cleanne. So it's Cleanne's. Oh wow, he's got this passion, right? Um, but the prince comes up, and he's gonna fight for her. Um, so they have their joust and the guy ends up losing the joust. So the prince takes Cleanne into the cave of love. Um, and then uh, Lady Love shows up and they do the end piece thing. And they get in invited to be part of her, her troop. It was interesting. A lot of fun though. A lot of fun. I love that scenario. Oh. Uh, Gen Con. Rumor was 75,000 people. I don't know, because I was there when there was 45,000 before COVID hit, and it was packed. And this time it didn't seem all that packed all the time. Um, but, oh! I did get a couple of things. Dr. Cthulhu. <laughs> I love these books. It's great. You gotta love them. Oh, uh, and BRP's Game Master Pack is out. It's actually got a screen in here and a little, little booklet. Yeah, not sure about that part because the big piece here—that's the screen. <laughs> Haven't opened it up yet. Let's check it out. Happy gaming. Oh, there was actually one other thing I got. Hold on. Uh, I did go to Goodman Games and splurge. I got a ticket when I bought that. And I go to this. They've got a... Um, uh, not an auction. They're doing a, a raffle. Oh, cool. Okay, so I'll go down the raffle. Wonder what they got, right? They had a bunch of of uh, print proofs of covers. Um, they had um, some other some other stuff, some um, color. Must have been proofs for something. Didn't recognize that. Um, one of these. And the grand prize was apparently there was a booth or a cabinet somewhere for Goodman Games where they had a bunch of stuff in it. And the grand prize was you get everything in that booth, in that, in that cabinet. That was pretty cool. Uh, but then afterwards, everybody who still had a ticket, well, everybody had a ticket because you're breaking a half, right? Everybody get 20% off back at the booth. I already bought the expensive thing. That's what I need the 20% for. <laughs> I should have just bought a couple of little things. I got well, Next year. Buy a couple little things, get multiple tickets, then afterwards go back and get my thing. <laughs> Happy gaming.